From President Biden to pundits across the spectrum, most, but not all, are backing Israel. More than 1,000 civilians slaughtered, not just killed, slaughtered in Israel. Among them, at least 14 American citizens killed. Parents butchered using their bodies to try to protect their children. We must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. On The View, sharper criticism of Israel fighting back. Joining us now to analyze the coverage, Ben Dominich, editor-at-large at The Spectator. And in Los Angeles, Leslie Marshall, the radio talk show host, both of Fox News contributors. Ben, on almost every story the media cover, there are the divide. One side says this, the other side says that. The consensus in the American press right now seems to be that the, after these unthinkable Hamas atrocities, that there are not two equivalent sides. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that most of the media is taking that side. So I think that some of the voices that are taking that position stand out all the more. Um, you obviously played the clip from uh, Sonny Hassan on the, on the View. There have been a couple of other uh, media members uh, on MSNBC and mm -hmm. elsewhere who have uh, taken uh, an opposite stand. Certainly on social media, you see some of this. Yes. Uh, but I do think that it's almost impossible to advance that argument in the face of the facts as we know them on the ground. Um, and look, the Gaza is an incredibly uh, is it compl uh, an incredibly condensed population. You do not have the luxury uh, of, you know, in, as we've seen in many other conflicts, uh, of really having the possibility of, of bombing them in any real sense, responding to this as Israel has yeah. every right to, without uh, the threat of the deaths of innocents. Um, but that's something that, frankly, Hamas was counting on. It's yes. something that they understood about this dynamic, and we have to understand that this is something that they welcomed because they do not care about their people. They yeah. only sought the death of Jews. Leslie, whatever mistake Israel has made, and the Netanyahu government certainly not immune to criticism, isn't that dwarfed by a massacre at a music festival and the killing of children and babies? Look, when this, and just so people know my background, I have a Jewish parent, I'm married to a Muslim, I lived in Israel, and I also have been to the Palestinian territory. So I don't come at this from sound bites or headlines or mm -hmm. pictures or videos online. I've seen it with my own eyes, and certainly I haven't been there during this. Um, what happened is absolutely horrific. It is a massacre. It is mass murder. And here was my worry, Howie, and I don't want to be like Leslie was right, but my worry was that the tide would start to change, and I think Hamas counted on it, and some people would say Hamas set a trap for Israel and that they're perhaps stepping into it with what they plan to do in Gaza. Gaza, 52%, almost 53%, of their 2.3 million population are under 18 years of age. So more than half of the Gazan population are children. And, when you, and, and you know what? I read something on Twitter and it made me cry. And it said, I will stand alongside the casket of a Israeli child and weep the same as I stand alongside the casket of a Palestinian child. And I think that's what it is when it comes to the children. The children are not part of the 44% that elected Hamas yeah. into government in Gaza. Right, the which is a dictatorship, what, by the is, way. The problem is, and that's what, and right, I mean, that's what we're seeing, absolutely, and that's what we're seeing, I, I think, in the change in the tone of coverage and also in the response and also in the increase free Palestine right. and pro-Palestinian, not okay. pro-Hamas rallies. Uh, you know, the American press was notoriously silent during the Holocaust. Now I think that's not the case. But as Leslie is saying, do you think the media are moving on uh, to deal with what is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza uh, with the blockade and not having enough food and a million people mm -hmm. ordered to move from the north to the south and some of them don't have any shelter. Uh, look, I, I understand that the media, this is something that I think was very predictable and Leslie was right to predict it and just mm -hmm. in the sense that, and it was something that I was saying a week ago as well, uh, you're going to see the media inevitably move away from this pro-Israel position uh, and, and start to say, oh, well, they've gone too far. Oh, well, you know, this is, uh, this is too much. But I think that what we have to understand is that Israel, if, the, if Israel stops defending itself, if it allows these types of, of and a, a massacre of this type to happen without the repercussions of going in and taking out the leaders of Hamas, of Hamas and the participants in this uh, in a very direct and violent way, then they will be exterminated. They will be exterminated by the people who want to see them exterminated. And that's why Israel has to keep fighting. And that's the perspective that I think the media has a duty to offer. 
that there is one side in this situation that brought this upon themselves with their inhuman action against innocents, and that the innocent uh, casualties of war that, the, that inevitably follows is something that they began, that it was not Israel that took the first step. Right. And um, Israel, you know, its enemies, like Hamas, like Hezbollah, uh, believe it has no right to exist, wants to wipe the country off the map. Leslie, uh, it's certainly fair to criticize President Biden, uh, who I thought gave a very moving and forceful speech, we played a little bit of it at the top, for his dealings with Iran, uh, which funds and trains groups like Hamas. And now, after saying, oh, that $6 billion that was part of the Iranian assets, part of the prisoner swap, uh, it was irrelevant. Now they've caved the pressure in and freezed it again. Uh, should the media make that a main focus? No, I don't think it should. Uh, you know, just like I didn't think COVID should be political. This shouldn't be political. I know people say, how can you not people? No, this shouldn't be political. I think this is humanitarian. I mean, honestly, nobody should be pro-Hamas. Nobody should also be uh, when the U.N. says we have people in hospitals and we can't move them in 24 hours, please, we are begging you, including our own workers, uh, nobody should be pro that either. I mean, we as a world need to get together. Um, and it's not just Iran, though, uh, Howie. You know, when this first started, Jordan and Egypt were very pro-Israel. And after Israel made that stance and said what they were going to do and gave uh, the Gazans in the north uh, 24 hours to get to the south and people are like, how will they get there and where will they go to Ben's mm -hmm. point, especially with the denseness of the population, you've seen a change in that tone uh, from Jordan, uh, from Egypt. Uh, so certainly, you know, if people want to criticize President Biden, he's not alone with the rest of the world and what they were trying to do is prevent uh, Iran from attacking and being able to have nuclear weapons quicker to attack Israel. Uh, but I don't think this is the time to be playing, um, you know, politics. I think this is the time for the world to get together to stop what could be not only a Middle East war, but yeah. perhaps, God forbid, a world war. Right. Uh, Donald Trump has taken a lot of flack for some comments he made, flack from the media, flack from Democrats, and from his, some of his Republican presidential opponents for saying this. Let's roll it. I'll never forget that Bibi Netanyahu let us down. That was a very terrible thing. You know, Hezbollah is very smart. They're all very smart. Ben, um, it's the timing of Trump's remarks, and he's referring to uh, a military operation that he says Israel bailed on. Israel, Israelis uh, deny this. But what do you make of the former president's uh, comments here? Uh, his inability to to move away from making anything personal, even in the most dire of circumstances, are we supposed to be surprised at this point? Of course, this is what he cares about the most. Um, and I think that he's actually spent the days following trying to walk that back, at least in yeah, some of the social saying posts. Israel has like, no greater friend than the 40th exactly, president. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I have to respond, though, to what Leslie just said about, about the Iran deal, because I don't think that's turning this into... Uh, in any way, I don't want to take away from what Joe Biden said about Israel because I thought that that was one of the strongest things he said in a long time. At the same time, the special envoy that he appointed, okay, the original author of this Iran deal, Rob Malley, is currently under suspension for violating uh, so many different uh, security protocols and being suspected of actually being an Iranian spy or perhaps enabling their own agents to take advantage of that deal, a deal that came back on, it became live again as soon as Joe Biden was elected. So from my perspective, that separate question about is the coddling of Iran that we have seen under the Obama and Biden administrations. Is that a fair political question? And I think the answer is absolutely yes. Leslie, a brief response from you. Well, I think it's a fair uh, question, but you know what I can't stand, and I see it from the right, whether it's the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the Republicans who can't get their act together in the House for crying out loud, um, you know, to stand there, you know, uh, finger pointing and blaming President Biden for this when the only blame, and we love to blame, don't we? Americans, we love to blame all humans, but I think Americans do it more than anybody else. You know, the only blame here is Hamas, and let's go back to blame. Uh, Donald Trump was blamed, rightly so, by both sides for talking about smart, intelligent um, of a terrorist organization, right. Hezbollah. Um, and and I, I, I think, you know, I, I agree with Ben on that 100%. Um, you know, Just he quickly. did a 180 when he saw that wasn't benefiting him personally. The, the, and the, the, the House can't get its act together that. because of 208 Democrats and their decision to join with the hateful eight, uh, eight different uh, individuals well, in we'll the talk. Republican Party. We'll but one of us. them wasn't we'll Marjorie, Taylor Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't talk, vote. We'll didn't talk vote about that later. Yeah. I, Marjorie, I, Taylor I, Green, <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene did blame Joe Biden 
for what is happening in, right. in the Middle can, East. And can I, I think call a halt to this? <laughs> I did want to mention that I'm glad that President Biden did an interview in 60 Minutes. He just seems to be getting now that people need to see the, a president leading in times of crisis. Also, a Reuters reporter was killed in, in the war, and AP has sidelined a Gaza reporter who tweeted things like, Israelis are like Nazis. Some left-wingers, for reason of ideology or ethnicity, have no sympathy for Israel. In fact, are quick to blame the Jewish state for any Mideast violence and excuse the tactics of Hamas, including at MSNBC. Been uh, so disappointing for some at MSNBC, but why are some liberals generally so wary of using the word terrorist to describe those carrying out what are clearly horrible acts of terror? Well, I think, Howie, that there's a connection here that we need to understand, which is that the reason that you see support from the socialists, from uh, the BLM backers, from a lot of the same people in these leftist organizations is because these are all the different trees, uh, different branches of the yeah. tree of the, the decolonizer movement as a whole, you know, whatever you want to describe it as mm -hmm. in recent years, which has become a, a cause celeb on the far left. And I think that what you're actually seeing is a conflict, which is to some degree a generational conflict between the left establishment, which typically is more akin to being pro-Israel or at least fine with Israel and on a yeah. number of different uh, ways, uh, with a younger and quite loud, uh, vibrant uh, leftist movement within not just the media landscape but the political landscape as well which views this as part of that overall effort and and is completely aligned uh, with Palestine those are the same people that you see backing protesters in the streets appearing at rallies you know putting up their Palestine flag yeah. uh, and in response to uh, the support from Israel that you see from most of American politics Leslie the New York Times insisted on calling Hamas militants then there was a story that said they were terrorists. I thought, okay, they've finally seen the light. But the story was changed later in the day to gunmen. Washington Post, BBC, also avoiding the use of the word terrorist. How do you see it? I see it as we're um, focusing on the wrong issue. It really doesn't matter what we call what we call them, and I call them terrorists, and I'm a liberal Democrat. I think the reason for this, Howie, is twofold. One, the United Nations does not list Hamas as a terrorist organization. Rather, they do call them a militant operation. And also, because they are uh, an elected political body, um, you know, by 44 percent of those that could vote, of the less than half that are over 18, and like you said, it was not, uh, you know, it wasn't a majority by, you know, if you win by majority, because yeah. if so, they would have lost. Um, so I think I think that's part, you know, part of uh, of the reason. I don't think it's pandering being on the left. Sorry, Ben, but being on the left, it, it doesn't make me feel good or bad what they call them. We all see what's happened in the same pictures. And if I may add quickly one other thing, I really want us to be careful about lumping people that are saying they're pro Hamas to people yeah. who are pro Free Palestine. I understand that. Let them I understand have their that. own state. But, but and, it is important. That, you know, but it people is important, that feel Leslie. that they have it's been important what we so call long. them. It's important that we call it out for what it is. I, I mean, I think. Right, and, and if, frankly, if, I don't if, think if, any if of these MSC, people are taking marching orders minute, from, the, from the United Na Nations. And, and frankly, the United Nations, which is essentially an anti Israel body in the way that it behaves and certainly is in no position to lecture us given the kind of, of uh, elevation that they have given to uh, authoritarian and despotic regimes. Regimes around the world who use the UN to recycle and basically try to uh, to uh, apply some kind of shamefulness uh, and moral equivalency to the rest of the world and the free world in the West. I, I simply do not accept the idea that it doesn't matter what we call them. If, right. if you just if you call them militants and you're wearing and you're, uh, you are weighing in in favor of, of Palestine in this moment, I think it's a tell about what you're willing to do and how much you are willing to grapple with the extreme and hateful acts that went on as we saw this past week. I don't want to be unfair to ordinary Palestinians living in poverty in Gaza, but I'll tell you this. If uh, gunmen had killed 200 people at a music festival in Nashville or Austin, all of the media would be using the word terrorist. So, Leslie, there have also been uh, all of these rallies uh, on behalf of either Hamas or Palestine, depending on how you look at it, uh, Midtown Manhattan, Columbia, where I went, uh, the Harvard students uh, putting out uh, statements, it's all Israel's fault, all this violence is Israel's fault. Uh, what is it about some elements of the left that refuse to condemn the killings of children and babies carried out by Hamas?
You know, it's very interesting I'm on TV today about this with you because last night we had a belated birthday dinner for me with my husband and my kids and we were walking through downtown L.A. and there were a bunch of people that were um, pro-Palestinian um, and uh, didn't want occupation and they were all yeah. getting like tacos, right? Just briefly. And okay. I'm walking right by them and I said, can I, just, can I just ask you something? And I said, you know, what's your take? And basically they were not pro-Hamas. It was for them a problem, not just the line in the sand, but that these people have just been oppressed uh, for so long and that something, like it was a matter of time before somebody was going to do something horrific. Yeah. That was their that was their stance. Okay. Well, uh, different people on that side of the argument have different views. Ben Dominich, Leslie Marshall, thanks for joining this conversation.